All right, in this video, I'm going to do another example of solving a quadratic inequality. So um, maybe slightly trickier in the sense that, that it won't factor uh, quite so nicely. So again, the first thing I do is I always make one side of my inequality equal to 0. So I think the easiest way to do that is to subtract 32 from both sides. So on the left side, we'll have negative 2y squared uh, minus 20y minus 32. And that's going to be now greater than or equal to 0. So one thing I'm going to do just to make the numbers hopefully a little bit easier to deal with is I notice that all of these are even. So I'm going to divide everything not by positive 2, but by negative 2. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that, again, is I like the coefficient on the y squared term to be a positive number. So since it's already negative, if I divide by a negative, that will make it into a positive number. So negative 2 over negative 2 is positive 1y squared. Uh, negative 20 over negative 2 is going to be positive 10y. And then negative 32 over negative 2 is going to be positive 16. So again, we're trying to figure out when this is greater than or equal to 0. So once I have one side equal to 0, I now kind of so, uh, just solve the corresponding equation. So y squared plus 10y plus 16 equals 0. So the first thing I think is, uh, you know, does this factor nicely? Um, so I'm thinking two numbers that multiply to 16 but add up to 10. And I think there are two numbers that do that. Uh, so again, 1 and 16, that wouldn't work. 2 and 18 multiply. Well, hey, 2 and 8, or excuse me, not 2 and 18, but 2 and 8 multiply to 16. And 2 and 8 also add up to positive 10. So I think we can use a positive 2 and also a positive 8. So if I were to solve, I would set y plus 2 equal to 0. And that would give me the solution of y equals negative 2. And if we set y plus 8 equal to 0 and subtract 8, we'll get y equals negative 8 as our other solution. So again, what the, at, at this point, basically, and this is kind of true for, again, inequalities in general. What I now do is I put these numbers on a number line. So I've got negative 8 and I've got negative 2. And what I do is I go back and look at the inequality that I'm trying to satisfy. Okay, So the inequality I was trying to satisfy is y squared plus 10y plus 16. We're trying to figure out when that's greater than or equal to 0. Well, I always check these values first. If you plug negative 8 in, we're going to get 0 out because, again, that's what we figured out by doing this algebra. So if I plug in negative 8, well, if I get 0 on the left, 0 is greater than or equal to 0, so that works. If I plug negative 2 in, I'm also going to get 0 out because of the algebra that we just did. So that number will work. Again, we'll get something, certainly 0 is greater than or equal to 0. And now what I have to do is just take a number smaller than negative 8, a number in between negative 8 and negative 2, and a number bigger than negative 2 and test each one of those numbers in the inequality. So maybe I'll try x equals negative 10 first, or excuse me, uh, y equals negative 10. So if I plug it into my inequality, I'll have negative 10 squared plus 10 times negative 10 plus 16. And I'm trying to figure out if that's greater than or equal to 0. Well, um, negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. Uh, positive 10 times negative 10 would be negative 100 plus 16. Well, the 100 minus 100 cancels out, but certainly 16 is greater than or equal to 0. So that means every number smaller than negative 8 works. If I take a number in between negative 8 and negative 2, maybe I'll try x equals, I don't know, I'll use negative 3 since, you know, small numbers at least make the arithmetic easier. So if I plug negative 3 into my inequality, I'll get negative 3 squared plus 10 times negative 3 plus 16. And again, what I'm asking myself is, do I get something on the left that is greater than or equal to 0? Well, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Positive 10 times negative 3 is negative 30 uh, plus 16. Again, is that greater than or equal to 0? 
Well, if we take 9 plus 16, that's 25. And 25 minus 30 is negative 5. Well, negative 5 is not greater than or equal to 0. So that means it implies that no number in between negative 8 and negative 2 will satisfy our inequality. So again, now I'll take something just bigger than negative 2. I think I'll use x equals 0. That'll make the arithmetic easy. And notice if you, again, I keep using x. I should be using y. If we plug in y equals 0, we'll get 0 squared plus 10 times 0, which is going to be 0. Well, 16 is greater than or equal to 0. Um, that inequality would be true. So it means anything bigger than negative 2 also works. So if we want to write our solution now in interval notation, well, the shaded numbers on the left are numbers that work. So we'll go from negative infinity up to and including negative 8. We can use any number from that interval. Or, so again, we can use our little union sign. Or we can use anything starting at negative 2 and including it. So I use the brackets up to um, positive infinity.